very special welcome to all of you who are watching us on BNN TV, RCN Channel 83, World Wide Web. That's right, folks. We are now global. And for all of you who are watching us after the fact, we are now on YouTube, thanks to our special media guru, Ted Lewis. Jim Sayer hosts the show with me again tonight for a very special program. Tonight we have Ed O'Keefe and Al Cholella with us tonight, and both actors in the Boston area. We're going to talk about the, the motion picture industry, the television industry, the music industry, and the industry in general pertaining to the you know, entertainment here in the Bay State. Hey, Jim, what's going on? John, nice to be here again, back uh, from our summer vacation. And summer films, too. That's right. We have a lot of films, a lot of things to talk about. A lot of different movies came up, and we're glad to have them. And uh, anytime the business can come to this area, these gentlemen and us love to work. You know, Ted, Ted 1 was a phenomenal success. Yes, it was. And Ted 2 looks like it's going to be successful as well. And, and that was filming right here in the yeah. state as well. Ted 1 made over $400 million. Oh, wow. I think it cost only 46 to make. Mm -hmm. So anytime you have those figures, there's going to be a Ted 2 and a Ted 3, I yeah, understand. Well, Seth MacFarlane had a, a winning formula with that, and it's, it sounds very promising. But other films, too, right? That's right. And more and more films are coming. Anything in the foreseeable future? The Finest Hour. Start filming next month. Okay. It already has people out there already doing it. I don't know if anyone right. worked on it well, yet. No, I don't. But next month, they're going to have some more people working, and they're filming that in Quincy. Close that's to home. That's real close. You know, folks, Jim and I make no secret about how important the motion picture industry here is in the Bay State. And the, both actors that we have on will certainly back us up on that. But what you can do is make sure that your state reps and your state senators know how important those tax breaks are here that's in true. Massachusetts. Keep the motion picture industry here in the Bay State because it's a win-win situation, not for the local actors and the people who ply their trade around the motion picture industry. Hey, but folks, and uh, the movies, if you go see these films, you'll know Boston shines, it looks great, and it's great for yes, PR. Right, Jim? And we got two actors here who also say that. We have Ed O'Keefe, who I had the pleasure of working with <laughs> yes. several years ago. <laughs> Quite a and few. We have Al Chalala, am I pronouncing that correctly? So far, yeah. And Al, ha Al and I have worked together more recently than Ed and I have, but you, you've been busy too. Yeah, no, not as busy as I'd like to be. And that's Remember gonna, that, folks. And that's what we're going to talk <laughs> about. Ed, welcome to the program. You and I worked on a movie several years ago. Now, I'm going back about five or six years. I'm going back almost 20 years. <laughs> Celtic Pride. Yes. Which was wow. one of the major films shot here after a long time of not having a whole lot of films here. True. Yes. And then after that, things seemed to explode. In the movie industry. Because of you two guys. <laughs> Perhaps. That must, that must have been it. It must have been it. It must no. have been it. No, but sure. nonetheless, it, 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 it whetted a lot of appetites here in the Bay State. And casting agencies got involved, and they've been around for a while, and you know, a lot of actors here with the proximity to New York is important as well. But movies are here. Movies have been coming here for the last 20 years. Jim and I talk about yeah. this all the time. And like Jim said, more movies are here. More movies are coming here, too. And we want to keep those films coming. What have you been doing recently? Recently, I, uh, I just worked on, um, well, I, I had auditions for The Equalizer. Right. And, uh, that was shot about a year ago, right? Yeah. Zoe Washington. Yeah. And um, I just worked on the business trip, or Unfinished Business, right. which, which is Vince Vaughn. Mm. And it looks like a pretty funny movie. Sienna Miller was in it, and right. um, we had fun shooting a little We worked, scene. Jim and I worked a couple of days on that as well. Oh, okay. And that was different, because they filmed that seven months ago here. Then they took a hiatus, and they came back and started I was wondering filming if that were, again. Because I filmed that seven months ago. Me too. And came reshoots. Back. From what I understand, um, they said that uh, they had to redo some scenes. Okay. Like I did one day last November. Right. Out in the freezing cold, uh, right opposite the uh, Coast Guard. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. the, uh, by the Marriott. We worked at the Marriott down there. I was outside. Yeah. In a suit. Now I brought my uh, overcoat, and I says, "Oh, this is great." And she said, uh, "Wardrobe says I don't want you to wear the overcoat." So it was cold. It was rainy. Fortunately, I wore my thermal underwear. Oh, yes. That's the only way I made it. Yeah. But uh, that was one day. Mm -hmm. and that was it. Now, come to find out, I did an overnight recently mm -hmm. uh, at the airport, walking back and forth. You know, 
I need the exercise anyway. <laughs> Vince Vaughn is going up and down an escalator. And um, James Franco's brother, young brother, 28-year-old David Franco, is making an appearance in this movie. He was there also, which I th thought was interesting. And he's, he's got kind of his brother's looks, too. Well, that's the yeah, nature well, of the business. I mean, and we're welcoming Nepotism that. works. <laughs> the, nature the, the, the nature of the business right. is the film's here, and sometimes mm -hmm. they have to come back. Uh, now, you, you've done a lot in the last couple. In the last couple of years, you, you've done a lot. I, I catch a day here, a day there. Mm -hmm. and, uh, on, uh, what was it? Uh, Spotlight. Yes. Caught one day on that, which is uh, supposedly a story about the priest. Still, still, right. Supposed to tell the story. Or right. Not? Well, yeah, it's it's uh, about the Boston, Boston Globe, Globe covering right. okay. of of the Priests fiasco can. in the Catholic Church, right. um, especially here in and that in and Boston. that's it's pretty ironic because um, back in two thousand two we we did a movie called Mystic River, mm -hmm. uh, and that's that's shot not far from where we are right now. Right, and that's fact. that's when the Globe Spotlight team had had uh, exposed this right, uh, clergy right. scandal with the uh, sex abuse. Yeah, the Mystic River was directed by Clint Eastwood, if I'm not yes, mistaken. Yes, it was. And we had, I worked one day in that, and that was not far, that was not, sh that was shot not far from where we're sitting right now. We're sitting in Eggleston Square right now, that's where the BNN TV studios are. And 100 feet from here <laughs> was a set. Yeah. yeah really? Was it so, that close? Well, pretty close, I so think. So at the time, it was pretty prominent in the right. newspapers about the clergy priest scandal. Right. And uh, a woman called me up. She says, uh, Ed, we'd like to cast you as the priest in Mystic River. And I said, uh, it doesn't involve young boys, does it? <laughs> oh, and she was taken geez. aback. Because right. they used to be jumping, you know, they offer right. you a, right. a role in a feature film. They, they used to, you know, right. yes, of course. You know, and I'm like, uh, it doesn't involve young boys. And she says, uh, oh, no, 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 you're the good priest. Right, and not only that, but it was about several years Previous to that, yeah. right? Yes. So it would have been about something, a time before that. Correct. Right. Yes. So you've had some good exposure. Yeah. Well, like you say, Clint Eastwood was the yeah. director. That, right. That's what uh, right. was Major the best director. thing for Major me. Major director, you know? right. And what a nice guy, you know. But he's so efficient. He made that film in 36 days. Wow. Because, yeah, it's not, it's very, it's done very methodically. Yes. Well, I didn't work on it, but I heard from people who did work on it. He does two, three takes, and that's it. Hosts, he rolls, uh, that's he it. rolls tape on, on a rehearsal and sometimes prints it. Wow. You know, we were moving on. You know what that move on right. is, is they go into the next shot. Right. right. And uh, a couple of times, you go and he says, I'm moving on. I'm like, I thought we just did a rehearsal, one take. And, wow. You know, but his feeling is that if his actors are doing their job, the audience shouldn't be worrying if that ketchup bottle's in the wrong spot or mm. this is... Right. My, minor little things. He doesn't worry about that right. stuff. And he has a good experienced crew. A lot of these productions will come to Boston and they'll grab a bunch of college interns from Emerson or whatever. Right. And um, he brings in a, an older experienced crew and they know exactly what he yeah. wants and he's very efficient. Now how long prior to that were you involved with the business? Um, that was probably about eight years in yeah, we did that in 2002. Right. So uh, the mid-90s. Yeah, I started in 93 with a right. film called Blown Away. Okay. With right. Jeff Bridges and Tommy yeah, Lee right. Jones. Yeah. And um, I just played a press photographer in the big scene in Copley Square where they blow up the bomb squad van. Tommy Lee Jones has been in quite a fil few yeah, films here in Boston, oh, yeah. as a matter of fact. Yeah. yeah. Company Men, I worked right. with him on yeah. that. Uh, ben Affleck film, right? Yep. And um, um, I was just thinking of R.I.P.D. Oh, yeah. Uh, in the bullpen, which is the longest gig I had was nine days over three weeks. The, the bullpen scene, mm -hmm. bull meaning cops, and we were all, 150 of us were dressed like um, police, police officers, officers mm -hmm. from 1900 to present day. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. It was so awesome. And Jeff Bridges is on, is on the set, yeah. Mary Louise Parker and Ryan Reynolds. Right. And, and uh, Kevin Bacon uh, made, a, made a show on it, too. But I, I have to laugh when you say uh, how efficient Clint Eastwood is. One, two, three takes, we're done. Uh, Robert uh, Stanky, I think it, uh, uh, director's name. Uh, take after take after take after take. 
Mm -hmm. Same scene over and over. So it got to be a joke where uh, every time in between takes, cut, uh, Jeff Bridges, hairdresser, would go running up to him with a little spray bottle <laughs> and his brush and do his beard. Oh, yeah. And here we go again. So much fun that you guys know Charlie Flannery? Oh, yeah. yeah. He, uh, in Canton, he's got his own uh, cable TV show. Hey, Charlie. Um, and we did a little take on that with three of us and uh, Bobby Kenny in the middle uh, would have his hairdresser come and do his hair while we're talking. And he's like, what's this all about? The three of us knew what we were right. talking, uh, what, yeah. what it was, it was all about. Inside joke. And my wife happened to, who's not an actress, doesn't want to be, was doing his hair on, nice. on the set. <laughs> it was just a funny thing. Well, RIPD was $110 million budget. And they were here and, for and several that, that months. Was, that yeah. was right. That's right. why they were here for so long. They, they used so many people from the scene to read, like you said, 1900 to just about present. Right. And where Clint Eastwood made that movie, that was like $34 million. So you see the difference how well, eight years or ten years can be on how far they were Yeah, but they took the Stop well. and Shop uh, warehouse yeah, and, and, and made it into the bullpen and scene with de sure. uh, desks. And actually, it was, um, yeah. High uh, Park. It's on the High Park. Near, near, near there. And so... Um, First day I was in there, I said, hmm, this place looks vaguely familiar as a warehouse. I had to remember, I did electrical work there many, many years ago. I'm a licensed union electrician. Mm -hmm. And it was really funny how they just transformed $10 million they spent on that mm -hmm. set. Yeah. And, we, and I went back to visit after. After the film was done shooting, all of it went into the dumpster. Yeah. Yeah. $10 million. Oy vey. Yeah, that's why it's a $110 million movie. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, and, and that's important for the, that's important for the, for the state, state, too. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's important. 617-708-3280. Again, 617-708-3280. We're cable casting live right here from the BNN TV studios, RCN studios. And uh, we're on now worldwide, uh, bnntv.net. You know, I wanted to ask you something. Uh -oh. You mentioned cable. Yes. You have an eclectic background. You were on cable? No, I have a, a, a night uh, thing for that. Oh! <laughs> oh, I thought you meant the teeth. Um, See, something for everybody in the yes. entertainment industry. <laughs> yeah, walk and chew gum at the same time. I have difficulty. Um, what was the show like? Uh, I, I actually started out with my buddy, Dr. Ross Geldart, good, good friend of mine. And uh, we've had a passion for men regarding being... Uh, Better men, better than we could and possibly be. Improve. Uh, Im improve. Better husbands, better fathers, better men of God. A Christian radio right. program is what right. we did here in the greater Boston area for 13 years. Ooh, wow. It was the only live call in men's Christian radio talk program in the whole world. And we're going to get into that in, in, in one or two first seconds. Phone because call we do year. have a call in. First Ooh. call. First Ooh. call. First call. Can we have your question, please? Hello. Maybe this, no. Can you hear me? Hello? No. Nope. Uh, I guess not. We, we, we did have a call, but you know, that person will be calling back. I'm familiar with the subject. And so when we did, when we did it was live call in. Right. Never had any mm, push the button, right. never had a bad phone call at all. And so a couple of years there were a hiatus, we were off radios. We actually did cable TV, our own program. What we did on radio, we did just like this with a couch and shot the breeze with guys. Any Anything that would possibly interest men. Right. As a matter of fact, when we did the radio show, we once had uh, Chubby Checker via telephone. And funny guy. He's a real, real nice guy. Right. Uh, him and so many other celebrities. And Talking about Chubby Checker <laughs> in ahead. the music industry, I want to just mention something on television right now. Last week, Ted Lewis, our social media person, and I went to Harvey Robbins' do up Hall of Fame induction ceremony up at the North Shore Music Theater. We might be getting a very important phone call in a little bit, but I'm not 100% sure about that. But the persuasions were there. They were singing a cappella, the Clovers, the Shades of Blue. You may know them from, oh, how happy the 1966 hit. Mm -hmm. uh, Bruno Mars's dad was there, Pete Hernandez and the Love Notes. Bobby Brooks Wilson, Jackie Wilson's son. And Kathy Young and the Innocents, she was famous for a thousand stars. 
It's interesting you brought that up about Chubby Checker. I wanted to bring that up, and I'm glad I did. Well, I did attend one of uh, Mr. Robbins' shows. Okay. And uh, Jimmy Clanton. Uh, Jimmy Clanton? Yeah. Yes. He, uh, he was performing that night, and we actually interviewed him live from uh, Somerville Theater. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was doing it with my cell phone. Well, did it, did it live right, back to, the, right yeah. back to the station. And real, real gentleman, uh, neat guy. And uh, Mr. Duke of Earl. He's going to be at the, one of the upcoming shows in a few months. And his name is? Chandler. Earl Chandler. He was so awesome. Right. Uh, just, a, just a gentleman. Really, right. really nice guy. Unless we digress into the music. Well, you know, that's interesting because you have a ba your background is eclectic too, right? I mean, you've done all sorts of things. You wear the thing at night too? No, no, no. Okay. John, we got another phone call. We, I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, can we have your question, please? Uh, yes, I have a question for both the gentlemen. Right. I saw a promo, and the promos were The Judge was one movie, and The Birdman was the other one. Now, I was kind of encouraged because they seem to have a story, because I feel lately it's all action and no story. I was wondering how you gentlemen feel about that. Well, we, we do feel about that. <laughs> Yeah, I, I would much rather be involved in a... I mean, the town was an action movie. It had a story, but uh, it's much more popular with the younger people for the action movies. But I truly like a good story myself. Uh, for example, um, Labor Day, I thought was a good movie, a good story. I only pulled one day on that, and uh, I was uh, cast as a theater ticket taker. Mm -hmm. Across okay. the street in Maynard, that's where you bought your ticket outside, and uh, you know, in the behind the plexiglass, and then the, you walk into your movie. So I gave tickets to one couple, uh, extras, another couple, and ready to do another couple. And there's Kate Winslet. No one told me. Oh yeah. I went okay, and her uh, her son in the movie, who was the hero. I thought it was a great movie, um, and so we in between takes. We had to do about three or four takes, the cameras across the street. She started shooting the breeze with me. Now, granted, she's young enough to be my child, but I found her delightful, really, really nice. And would you talk about young lady who, who called in? Um, it was a good story. I liked it a lot. And when we went to the premiere in Boston, uh, we actually met the author, I think uh, it's Joyce Maynard, who wrote the book. And uh, she used a lot of real life stuff and actually auto gave us all a copy and autographed it. Really nice lady. So uh, good stories, I agree. Right. For example, R.I.P.D. was all about action. It was from it's more a, a fantasy, a sci-fi right. fantasy thing. A lot but, of special effects. Right. But I, I agree. And the judge, what I do? Two days on that. Um, the judge looks like a good story, a believable story. Right. Now, did you want to, because I want to get into something that you were, were going to talk about, you, because we're talking about it, but we want to show the audience, too. And we have, we have reels for both. A reel is a, is a tape, if you will, a film of both work, of, you, of you, your work and your work. And I'd like to show a little of that, if I could. But did you want to just answer that, that caller before we do that? Well, like you were saying, I, it doesn't matter. I'd rather just be working, uh, on, right. whether it's an action movie or a good story, but for me to actually attend a movie, I would rather have it a good story yeah. than. But working in it, it's, it's whatever, but, because it, we have so many things going on right now. Hey, a buck's a buck. You know, uh, business is business, right? <laughs> because my my day on the set is just my scene. I don't get involved in the overall right. picture. It's sometimes nice often, to have often, have the context of, of of what that scene is oftentimes in. Oftentimes, we don't even know what it is. Uh, in, but sometimes you get the whole script, but. How often do you get to read the whole thing? Through? Now, we're going to have our technical people get together the reel that you brought, and Al brought a reel as well, and a reel for those of you who are interested in, in making, uh, going into the f film industry or having some involvement with it. A reel is something that you have to show your work, pretty much. And Jim has been, you've been in a lot of projects, you know, you have a lot of things, and we can say, well, you know, watch the film that you're in it. But this way, we can see you in several different projects. Yeah, it's, it's like a resume. It's a resume, yeah. pretty much. Only you can see it. Right. Um, so we're going to get our, te our technical people are getting ready, putting that in the, in the system so we could watch it. So why don't we talk a little about what we're going to see before we actually see it? Okay, it's, it's pretty diverse because the first, uh, the beginning of the clip is a movie called Celtic Pride, 
which mm. I worked sitting right next to John, our host. Yeah, right. That's for, a while ago. For 18, 12-hour days at the old Boston Garden. Wow. The wow. food center was already built, but we worked in the old garden before they tore it down. And they were long days. <laughs> and it was good experience. You know, and, and be, we're going to take this call before we get into that. That was pretty much baptism by immersion, at least for me, because I had never been on a movie set before. By immersion Tell or by fire? Right, <laughs> by fire. I, I've never been on a baptism movie set before, before, but we have a, we have a call right. Uh, no, we're, we're getting ready to show, oh, the, show, the, show, the, show the reel. But, uh, Here it is, John. There you go. There it is. There it is. You live at 311 Hazes Street in Quincy with a wife named Linda and three small dogs. Do not make a distress call. Also in the cash room, Martin Brevitt. You live at 27 County Lane, Randolph. Wife, also Linda. What? the Lindas want you to open this door. We have men outside your homes. I take exception at mm -hmm. Jeremy Renner calling me old time, yeah, right. but <laughs> I'll still be in take the scene with them any time. <laughs> wow. And, um, that was great. That was a great Yeah, it was, great it was fun, you know. Good job. Yeah, thank you. And this is promoting your work, of course. It's like a resume. That's a perfect word for it. It's a resume yeah, it of film, pretty much. Hmm. Yeah. Um, and you were told me, how many hours was that? That was six hours or whatever. Six hours for yeah. a minute and a half. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I had the script and I had got it down to, you know, memorized. Mm -hmm. And then Ben Affleck, being the director and the actor, he all of a sudden says, ah, why don't you do it this way? Well, I had rehearsed the original <laughs> script so much that it, I kept getting tripped up because mm -hmm. I would always want to do what I had rehearsed. Right. But... We got it. It, wor it worked out well. Um, it worked out well. Worked out uh, well. You mentioned that that happens in an audition too. You go in for an audition. Here, read this. Uh, you really uh, want a few minutes? Yeah. Okay. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Okay. So you read it. That was good. Now can you read this one? All right. <laughs> yeah. Now can you read this one? Now can you read this one? And then a, a call back. Okay. Which one? We're waiting for that one. Why don't you read this one? But as an actor. It doesn't really matter because they want you for whatever you have to deliver. If you're right for the role, if, if you look right for, right for role, that right. role, they're going right. to put a script out there and right. you just go by it. Both, both the actors do have right. hard times because they change it up on them, right. mm -hmm. but they want your face more than they want there the was a, I'm not sure who the act, actress was, but it's, it's a fairly popular actress. I'm not sure who she was, but um, there was a story several years ago that she had accompanied her sister to an audition. And the two girls were sitting in the area waiting for the mm -hmm. director to come out. And all the hundreds of girls were there, of course. And all the girls were going in. The director was seeing them, and he was discharging them also. And uh, it was at the end of the day. And the girl, this particular girl, hadn't been seen yet. And her sister was with her. So she went in. You know, the girl went in. She was ready to go in for her audition. And the director s saw her and said, OK, we'll get back to you. He came out and saw the other girl with her and said, she's the one. I'm going to make wow. you a star. Mm -hmm. She's the one. He, that's the look I'm looking for. <laughs> that's right. That's, that's good, a good, good story. Yeah. Yeah. See, Jim the, had that pegged. Yeah, you're looking for the face. A lot of times I've gone yeah. in and they say, you, still, you don't look right. Could read the word for word, line for line, but we just don't have that look. Jim, you have the face for radio. 617-708-3280 with cable casting live right here BNN TV channel 23 RCN channel 83 we're also worldwide on the net bnntv.org and thanks to our social media person Ted Lewis we are now seen 
on YouTube worldwide. Very special welcome to all of you who are watching, a lot of you who are watching us from Emerson College. Mm. Very special welcome, Jim. We have a lot of young people, people watching from us Emerson from Emerson watches. College. Yeah. Uh, a young lady by the name of Selena, mm -hmm. she's watching us tonight, and we said, said that we would uh, have a special hello to Selena. Hi, Selena. Hi, Selena. And uh, so she's watching us tonight, and a lot of people who are watching us and saying, hey, Jim, hey, John, I want to be in the film industry, too. Well, that can happen. It can happen, but it's a serious business in which people have a lot of fun, do a lot of great work, and find it terribly rewarding. And here's one of those persons right now, Can John. Can we have your phone call, please? Hello? Uh, yes, I have a question for Al and Ed. I wonder what made them decide to become actors. Good question. And, and do you think uh, that it's harder for a woman as she gets older to get a part? You must be looking at the old guys. Yeah. I mean, uh, <laughs> go ahead, Ed. I just enjoy you, it. You, and you've done well. You, yeah. You've done well. How, how did you start? You've done well. What's, what's her point? Yeah. I, I started on the, the, oh, the, the feature Where's film, Blown idea? Away. They were filming in, uh, in Copley Square with Jeff Bridges and Tommy Lee Jones, Forrest Whitaker. And um, I was driving through, and I seen a commotion going on. And I parked my van and went over to see what was going on. Because nothing attracts a crowd like a crowd, right? Okay. <laughs> wow. And I stood with a bunch of people, and they were all extras, and I didn't even realize it. Wow. And they says, all right, that's a wrap. Let's go sign out. I wasn't even hired in the movie. So I went up to sign out. <laughs> so resourceful that I am, I got a blank voucher, went in the men's room to fill it out. On the way to the men's room... I, I saw a crumpled up voucher on the floor. I scooped that up and copied all the pertinent information with my name and social security number, turned it in, and the, and the, uh, the PA said to me, all right, six o'clock call time tomorrow. I went home that night, called my job, and says, I'm gonna take a vacation day tomorrow. Is that all right? <laughs> they said yes. The next day I showed up or a little early, and I the guy said, what number were you yesterday? I gave him the number that was on the corner of the voucher. Right. And but, but Ed, you had an innate desire to do that, oh, though, right? Yes. I mean, that's where it's coming yeah. from. So that was your first, quote, acting job? Yes. Wow. <laughs> uh, what about yourself? I yeah. had no interest in acting whatsoever. Right. Matter of fact, years ago, remember uh, Spencer for Hire? Yeah, that was shot oh, here in Boston. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, what, a, what a great guy. Right. Robert uh, Yurick. Robert Yurick was, yep. was a was a great guy. Um, my daughter was enamored with watching him, and uh, my wife used to call different sets. Well, we got another phone call. There it is. We do. Can we have your question, please? Yes, hi. This is Helen Fitzpatrick. Hi, Helen. And I was just calling to say, hi, I'm enjoying the show. Oh, good. But I disagree with a lot of things, but then I have no comments to say about it because... <laughs> People on the show, they have their own ways of doing things. Well, that's it's nice. just okay. that simple. All right. Thank you for calling. All right. Good night. Good night. And thank you, Helen, for Helen calling in. Helen's a regular. You know what? That's the same thing when we had a men's radio talk program. More female listeners, more female callers. Talk to guys. Why don't you call in? Ah, yeah, I don't know. But anyway, um, so my daughter wanted to be an actress, and uh, they said, you know, get your experience on the boards, you know, uh, on theater. So we took her to a th uh, community audition, North Shore Community Theater, and uh, Lou Abner was the play. Right. And so she was going to be a dog patcher in, in the background. And the director says, hey, Al, come up and read. Now, nah, I don't do acting. Nah, forget about it. I got sucked into Mayor Daniel D. Dogmeat, singing, dancing, lines. Wow. Singing and dancing, too? Singing and dancing. I'm going like, this is not my bag. Weren't we thinking, weren't we going to have you sing and dance tonight? <laughs> That's what I was listening, I was reading on. Yeah, Jim, on Jim had a good response. I had posted something. I, I read that somewhere. On Facebook. Is that where it was, that you were going to sing and dance tonight? What are you tonight? doing on this show? <laughs> and Jimmy says, oh, uh, Ed promised he's going to sing and dance. Go. <laughs> so you, you oh. sang and dance, right? Yeah. And, and, and so we're re rehearsing for uh, three months to put on five live shows, which, yeah, was great to have the audience uh, feedback. But I'm, I'm a licensed union electrician. Right. I'm on a construction job in Boston. And I walk into work, and my 
partner would look at me and say, you had rehearsal last night, didn't you? <laughs> I got to carry again today, don't I? <laughs> it was really exhausting. I, I did enjoy it, but that was it as far as acting. I did the radio for 13 years, and one day I heard on the radio um, another station, uh, there's, they were having an audition in Boston, right. and I said to my wife, geez, I don't know, I, I don't know if I've got any talent or anything. Want to come with me? And there's a whole bunch of, I must have been one of the oldest guys there, if not the oldest. And uh, singing, dancing, and all this stuff. Finally stood before two people, a woman and, and a young guy. And, you know, what are you going to do? Well, what I've been doing for uh, so many years, because my daughter really appreciated him. Oh, you know Grover? Grover teach you your ABCs? <laughs> They're in far, up and down, round and around, up and down, over, under, through. Right. Oh, but me love to eat cookie. Oh, me love chocolate chip cookie. One, ah, uh, ah, uh, two, ah. Uh, Three, I love to come. Oh, hi, Bert. How you doing? Yeah, all right, Ernie. Oh, I love trash and anything ragged or rotten or rotten. And they thought that was good. Oh, Elizabeth, this is the big one. I'm coming to join you on it. So you do, you do impressions too? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> anyway, they thought that was good, and so I started taking a, a voiceover class. And then Boston Casting and CP Casting, and got my first uh, background job. Uh, this, and this is important, and, and we've all experienced this as well. And I think this might have something to do with move, the movies coming to certain places and moving around and doing things like that. They look for authentic people, characters. Yeah. They look for people that are police officers, a real police officer. Because all of us, look, we've all played police officers before, and we look like police officers in the uniform. But there's nothing as realistic as the real thing. And when a film is shot somewhere, you've got the characters. Robert De Niro did it in New York. You've got the actual characters in the location itself. Mm -hmm. People playing the characters. Not necessarily you know, actors that do that all the time, but people who do other things that happen to play actors, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So, and I think that has a lot to do with it. Perfect example of you. Uh, on, the, on the movie The Heat, Right. They cast me as an Irish guy in a bar. Oh, my like, goodness. Somebody named Ed O'Keefe. Is that really acting, or is it... Right, it's, that's, it's, a, that's exactly what I mean. You know, it's right. you! <laughs> right. Yeah. Good right. job. Wearing my signature scally cap. I usually have that. Yeah. I had seen a film once. It was a Robert De Niro film, and there was a scene where everyone was in a bar room. A lot of guys were just sitting around, and the person that I was seeing it, uh, went to see it with said, you know what De Niro did in that scene? I said, no, what did he do in that scene? He said he used people from the neighborhood. That's why it looks as the way it does. Those are neighborhood people. Those yeah. are neighborhood folk. Okay, John, you got another phone call? We have a question, please. Question for both Al and Ed. Have either one of you done stage work, and would you consider doing voiceovers? Well, we know you can do a voiceover, right? Yeah, absolutely would consider doing voiceover. Did you yeah, ever do stage, I, though? Did you ever do stage? Well, that one yeah, time. Stage, yeah. But did you ever do it after that? No, I didn't have any desire. Really? But now I find out people who do do theater Is don't it? have three months of rehearsal. It's much shorter, maybe, maybe a month. I might be interested. And it's the, the best training on the planet. Oh, it's fun. I live in Stoneham, Mass. There's a theater There's there. Stoneham Theater, theater there. Sure, and sure. people have asked me, have you, you know, acted yeah. in Stoneham Theater? No. They did a good, pro, pro, uh, good production a couple of years ago, Oliver, if I remember correctly. Oliver. Oliver, they did. Uh, I don't have the voice. I don't have the voice for oh, voiceover work. Oh, cut it out. Work. Yes, you do. I have a Boston accent, but... Well, that's, that's in demand sometimes, just, too. For yeah. stage, though, for stage. stage. Uh, well, not necessarily no, stage, but... Stage, I, it's ironic because I'm also an electrician. Oh, really? <laughs> you and you? And, Jim, you've done... Know. Oh. You've done a lot in, in, in the film industry as well. I've done a lot. I, like everybody else, I, right. when the phone rings, which is right. not as much as it used to, and I did stand in. I stood in for Bruce Willis. Right. Nice. Sir Ben Kingsley. That was on the surrogates, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And I think when people look like somewhat a sure. resemblance, I guess, of somebody, they throw you in there as a, a stand in. But that's the job that most people like to get. When they tell you you've got to work 32 days, I couldn't it's work there. Pretty much days. guaranteed. It right. is. They told I couldn't yeah. get off because right. I work also. Right. So I told the uh, I couldn't fill in that days, but they let me know when the other guy couldn't right. do. So we went back and forth on days to work. Now Al Chalala, I'm pronouncing that correctly, right? Has a reel as well, 
and we're going to take a look at that. Our technical people are getting that all queued up and everything so that you can take a look at that and see what that's all about. Ted deserves a pay raise. Yeah, doing all sorts of stuff right now. <laughs> and uh, actually, social media is such a big thing. And, and of course, this is social media, too. We're on, mm -hmm. we're on YouTube sure. worldwide now. We're on the Internet. We're on the Internet as we speak. That's this right. is live stream. And then it's on also Comcast channels 23 and RCN channel 83, folks. In Boston. In Boston. In Boston, so it's seen everywhere else. Okay, Adam, there's something we need to discuss. Given that there's some clear proof here that you've destroyed department property, we feel it's appropriate to remove you from the film department. You must have formed some opinion. Look, in the old times, we'd be at war. I don't want that. You don't want that. All right. <laughs> Sick. I told you, my kid had a good idea. Oh, you got a special lady, huh? Yeah. You can blow it up. I see. Well, I see no reason for us to continue. Uh, you've come a long way since our first session. This is our first session. <laughs> <laughs> We're setting up. No, uh, this is a perimeter that is not. Hey, keep Yava. it up, punk. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You can handcuff me. No. Oh, okay. Wallet. Now that'd be an awfully tricky place for me to be hiding me gold. And if you promise to release me, the gold is yours. Don't turn your back on him. He succumbs to the gaze of mortal beings. It's Winston Weatherby, ma'am. Uh, uh, Miss Jane. It's a lovely day, isn't it? Just beautiful. A flower for you. All right, nobody move. This is a stick up. Hand over the money from the register, or nobody will even make it to the last supper. Ah, what am I telling you? There's a storm brewing. Just the fact that having the privilege of being able to do this and offer, not just of ourselves, but next generation. That was actually a, a town meeting in Stoneham. Were you, and that was, you weren't playing a politician, were no. you? No. Selectman? <laughs> no. You were promoting the cable TV. Cable TV, right. I'm a staunch supporter of cable TV. And that's what mm -hmm. we, Jim and myself, and all the guests that we've had on the program over the last couple of years, urge you to do. Be a, be a supporter of cable television. Be a supporter of the motion picture industry here in Massachusetts, the Bay State. Contact your local your local senators, your local senators, your Massachusetts senators mm -hmm. and your Massachusetts reps, and just say, look, hey folks, you know, we want to keep the movie industry here in the Bay State. We want you to support it. We want you to offer the tax breaks to make sure that those motion picture companies stay here, want to come back, do a lot of projects here in the Bay State, because a lot of folks, hey Jim, a lot of people, a lot of the creative people here that we've experienced with m making movies in Boston are from Boston. They're local boys and girls. Um, That's right. That's um, well, uh, what's her name? Uh, yeah. Ha, huh, Melissa McCarthy. Mm -hmm. She just had a great time here. Right, right. Uh, and, and I just love the movie, The Heat. Yeah. I loved it. <laughs> that, I was, mean, that was filmed, uh, I I was filmed right here in Roxbury. Right, right up the street, right I worked. Up the street. Right not not just here, but yeah. all over. Right. Yeah. And uh, matter of fact, I was talking to a couple of girls uh, up in uh, Danvers at the, uh, uh, yeah. Got another we have another call. Call. We have a question. Can we have your question, please? Uh, yes, yeah, this is for Alan Ed. Uh, could you tell me who is your favorite actor or actress and why? That's oh, a yeah. hard one, right? Yeah. Well, uh, I worked on Perfect Storm with George Clooney, who was the gentleman. Oh, really? He was so nice. And um, it's funny, we were on the set, and there was, uh, there was another Boston actor, uh, Bobby Jordan. Mm -hmm. He always played a vagrant. Okay, so then I played a dock worker. So we're sitting in front of the uh, Crow's Nest bar. It was it was just a, a fake set. We're sitting there, uh, and all of a sudden this young kid pops around with a Kodak uh, disposable camera and snapped our picture. He said, "Can I take your picture?" Yeah, yeah. He uh -huh. snapped the picture of me and Bobby Jordan because Bobby looked the part of a vagrant mm. all the time. I mean, he's even falling asleep on sets. But uh, <laughs> God rest his soul, he's not with us anymore. But um. The kid that took our picture was Mark Wahlberg. Nice. Yeah. And we know oh, wow. what Mark is doing now. He's making yeah. a lot of films. Yes. And money. 
Yeah. Arthur, in fact, Arthur came on the program a couple of months ago. Oh, yeah? so Arthur is his brother. We had, sure. a, we had a good time. Yeah, he's a great guy. Yeah, yeah we had a great time. And Al, who do you like, like, Al? Robert De Niro. I know it sounds corny, but uh, well, no, he's I, I really like, like Robert De Niro. Um, yeah. Different roles he's played, tough guy, and, and, fu and funny. I, I kind of lean toward right. humor. I, I know that's hard to believe. But we've seen we've seen some of that in your just work. Just a little. Yeah, I really I, I love making people a laugh. Tad, perhaps. I'm only here to make you laugh. A tad, perhaps. <laughs> See, it's working. Well, I wasn't asked, but I'm going to say Morgan Freeman. Ah, excellent uh -huh. guy. One of the nicest Decent gentlemen man. on the set. Ask anybody at the, his last day when he films. He asked if anybody wants a picture or an autograph, and he gave it out to everybody. I got my picture taken with them shaking his hand wow. twice. All right, he did this on two movies, Maiden Heights and Gone Baby Gone. Wow. Last day with Morgan, he will give you an autograph, shake your hand, be very nice to everybody. What a gentleman. Very nice guy. That's odd. Yes. That, yes, you know, yes, You don't hear that often. Matter of fact, just the opposite. Don't bother me. Right. Uh, <laughs> when we're on uh, set. Uh, well, there's a certain protocol that we have to follow. Through. Recently, yeah. And uh, they actually said, that guy's thrown off the set because he asked yeah. Yeah. to take and a And, you closer. know, professionalism is yeah. key here, folks. I mean, it, you have to be professional on stage, I mean, on set. Yes. And, and then people know this. I mean, people, because we've been doing it for a long time, and a lot of other people have, too. You just get to know how to do things. And that's the thing that uh, when you get newbies on the set, you know, hey, this is the first movie I've ever been in. Um, and they have a hard time with... The, the rules are right. Protocol. Protocol. Yes. Protocol. Of course, th what I've always heard was the actor is in character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't disturb him. He's memorizing his lines. Right. Don't ask for an autograph. Right. Which makes sense. Don't course. ask to take a picture with right. him. You know, just respect his personal space, which I've always done. And yet uh, some newbies will come on and say, I'm going to go get his autograph. <laughs> you know what? You'll be fired. Yeah, that just. But you'll get the well. autograph, yeah. maybe. No. <laughs> yeah, it's not not recommended. It might right. not work again. Yeah. Now, what's happening, Jim, in the next couple of months here? You mentioned that there's something happening. To find us out with yep. uh, Ben Affleck's brother, right. David. Casey. Affleck. Casey. Casey. Casey Affleck. Yeah. And uh, he he'll was be in Gone Baby Gone. Is that yes. Yep. He was very good in it. Uh -huh. uh, he'll be here, filming for next two months in November. Right. I hear, and everybody else. Oh, we got a phone call again, John. Oh, we do, Jim. Uh, okay. Yes, I. I have, a I have a question for Jim Sayer. Yep. Uh, Jim, I was wondering, who haven't you worked with that you would like to work with? Is there anybody special? I would like to work with Clint Eastwood. I never yes. worked with he, uh, he's He seems like a guy I really w would like. I love all his movies. He seems like a straight shooter, you know, and uh, he Did give and say take. straight shooter? Yes. <laughs> yes. And uh, we all remember the movies, yes. And, yes. Uh, but he looks like a guy I'd like to work for. I like to watch, you know, because I know on the, um, when we did, um, what was the movie with um, Mark Rufo and Leo DiCaprio? Mark Rufo. Shutter Island? Shutter Island. Um, Martin Scorsese had um, the dinner before they start filming. And one of the people from the crew came over and said, I really admire you. I watch you all your movies, and I think you're very talented. And Martin Scorsese said, thank you. I appreciate that, young fella. Then when the guy walked away, he told his assistant he didn't want to see that guy one day on the set. Because oh, his yeah. job is not to watch me. His job is to do his job. Right. So that guy didn't work one day on the set. So that's how it goes. So I'd love to work with Clint Eastwood. I'd love to see him work. You know? Maybe Ed will make a call for you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what do we have planned in the future? Uh, or the near future, I should say. Do you hear that? That's my phone not ringing. <laughs> <laughs> I... Go, I you know, um, if they well, call you the work. auditions that are uh, available, but I have nothing on the books right now. Well, you just uh, mentioned the, uh, what was this? The finest hours. Finest hours. Uh, no, I saw it. I submitted. You know, mm -hmm. for background work on it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know what the story is about? It's the. Uh, it takes place in 1954. There was a big storm, and there was a couple of ships that got in trouble, and the Coast Guard. Uh, was ordered not to go out. It was that bad of weather, mm -hmm. and the co and the Coast Guard officer, which is probably Casey Affleck, uh, they went out and they rescued these. He people. disobeyed the orders and he went out there. Wow! The two ships, I guess, collided. Two ta oil tankers were there. Awesome! Yeah, yeah. And that's so, going to be filmed right here. In, it's Quincy. In, in, they have a big Quincy. studio now with water. It's a big t 
uh, so they're using like this. yards in Quincy. And, yes, and they're yes. using it indoors and outdoors. Uh -huh. Well, I, I want to take this few moments just to mention something. Here at BNN TV, it's 30 years of television wow. programming here at BNN TV, so happy birthday, BNN TV. 30th okay. anniversary screening will take place, and of course you're familiar with what happens in cable television as well. Uh, Deborah Sharif, an associate of mine and who's been a producer here at BNN for very, you know, many, many years, uh, she put together a documentary called Peace, Harmony, and Prosperity Through Dialogues. And that's going to have a special screening right here, October 30th, 2014, at 6.30 p.m. And you are invited, folks, at the RSVP, but you are invited to this right here at the BNN TV studio. So if you've never been here before, if you've never seen how we make television, then you're perfectly welcome to come. Peace, Harmony, and Prosperity Through Dialogues, Thursday, October 30th, 2014, at 6.30 p.m. And you can RSVP by October 28th, membership at bnntv.org. And that's an opportunity to say how grateful Jim and I are to all of the people here at BNN TV who helped put this show on. Believe me when I say this, folks, I don't do this by myself. Believe me when I say that. This is a collaborative effort with people from here, BNN TV, as well as Jim and myself, my co-host, who does an excellent job in telling us all about the movies here in Boston, things that are coming here, and all of the people here who help bring this program into your homes. Now, onto your phones. Now, onto any other of these, uh, of these devices device. that exist worldwide. We're out there. But let's keep the movie industry here in the Bay State by pushing for the tax breaks through your contact with your local reps, your local rep, not congressional reps, but your local reps and your local senators, and say, hey, look, let's keep those tax breaks coming, folks. Let's keep movies may, being made here right in Massachusetts. Right, Jim? That's right, John. And we're glad that Marty Walsh, the mayor of Boston, right. who's a neighbor of ours. And he's going to be coming on the program yes, at some point. Yes, he's a neighbor of ours. Right. He's for the tax incentives. Right. He's always been. He's been. He was our rep. Right. And he more, wants more movies here. He's right. out forefront. He's talking to more people than he ever right. had before. Right. He wants to see more movies, which means all of us work, but right. all these people who want to get into the movie business, right. good luck to you also, because right. you can get in now. Where's Adam Sandler from? New Hampshire. New Hampshire. Yes. Yeah. And Deborah Has he done any few movies here? Yeah. Yeah, he's couple. done a few. Ben Affleck has done a couple. Mark Wahlberg has done a couple. Ted. Ted James. Too. He's done a couple, yeah. you know, everybody else, like you said, right. uh, Sandra Bullock, she's been here and done a couple movies, and she's not from around here, but a lot of people she loved want to, it, though. She loves the she area. She did the they proposal make, here, she did the heat right. here, and the reason I brought up Deborah Sharif as well is because Deborah is a documentary filmmaker, and that's something that people that Jim and I have had on this program are involved with as well, and as, as Al testified tonight to you have an eclectic background, there's nothing you probably can't do on stage, and you as well. You do all sorts of things, and Jim too, that you have to as an actor, voiceover, all, all these different things. But a lot of the people that we've had on the program, not only are actors, and they do voiceovers, and they do this, and they do that, now they're directing movies. That's right. A lot now of they're writing screenplays. They wear different hats. They're doing all sorts of things, you know? and that's one of the things that people here that have had uh, the opportunity to get involved with television have done. They've been making their own documentaries. And Emerson College, people come from all over the world to, to, to participate in some of the movies that Emerson College students make for their thesis projects. I've, I've actually acted in the clips you saw were from independent right. films mm -hmm. or student films. Right. The very first student film I ever acted in was a student film from Emerson College. And right. I want to say thank you, Emerson College. And I've had the privilege of acting in just about every college here in Boston area, <laughs> including Hartford, uh, University of Hartford. And there's some quality. That's right. Well, those the are the perspective. Done. Okay, they're short. The filmmakers, and, right. But, but quality. And a lot of these kids wind up in L.A. Mm -hmm. oh, sure. do, doing good stuff. So I, you know, I guess we, we can agree, absolutely agree on one thing. We appreciate entertaining people and getting them involved in Definitely. the entertainment process. That's, that's correct. But we, what we'd like to see is more people from this area get principal roles like Ed had in the town. And we have the talent here. We have the, not only we have the right. talent, we don't have to go outside New York, the bar, uh, outside we Boston, New York, group, or L.A. We have the people here, here who right. can cover all that. You had to mention that, Jim. So often we're in on a set mm -hmm. and we see just a little quick speaking role or some that's featured right. role 
the guys from usually L.A. or mm -hmm. New York. And I totally agree with you. And yeah. he totally screws up the accent. Yeah, they never sound good. Even when they're trying. He can't right. even park his car in the yard. Forget about it. Right. Forget about it. But I was in the Black Mass. Right. I was a bartender in South Boston years ago. So they needed a bartender. Right. So I was in the scene. And all of a sudden, when it comes to, you know, the chem in the, the bar, I'm supposed to say, hey, uh, can I get, uh, get you something? I'm out. The guy from L.A. who knew nothing about Whitey Bulger, because I asked him, he steps up and goes, what can I get you guys? That was a line. I could have said that you're line. A seg, you're a seg actor, That's right. I could have said that line just as better. He, he never even heard of white. You people. just said it better. That's right. <laughs> so that's how it works. And unfortunately, we don't get to pick and choose the actors in Boston. As well. Right. There's a creative side to it, and there's also the business side, and we mm -hmm. try to compromise and do the best that we can and, and just hope and, and uh, be positive about these movies coming here. I want to say... Uh, it's a privilege to be on the show. Oh, our, our privilege. Have John, you? Jim, really great um, for the invite and, you know, being next to this guy is no, just, no. I just hope some of that stuff rubs off. Yeah. If, <laughs> if, and I yeah. guess a little Vaseline wouldn't hurt. Yeah. If some of our audience said, hey, Al, hey, hey Ed, because uh, they, they know how to get in contact with Jim and myself, how do we get in contact with you? If our people at home are watching and saying, hey, I think you'd be great for my next role if there's a filmmaker out there. But we, we, Want a card? Mm. Well, t you tell, a, tell our audience. <laughs> Here you go. I dare you to zoom in on that. No, <laughs> no just, just give us an idea of how they get in contact uh, with you. You go on YouTube, you put in Al Chilella. C-I-A-L-E-L-L-A. -L -L Al Chilella. C-I-A-L-E-L-L-A. Okay. There's tons of stuff there on YouTube. Um, or well, Everson College kids watch us a lot. They're, they do, you know, and they sometimes they say, hey, you're perfect for the role. Right. You're perfect for the role. Oh, we got two minutes. Yeah. yeah. Get, you know, they'll call you and say, listen, right. we got a role, because I've talked to them a few times. i talked to a couple of them. I um, auditioned for one, and uh, it was a, the kid was saying, I see you on the show all the time. He says, oh, wow. we like to get more people on the show, and hopefully we can pick some of them up. Ed, what about yourself? I appreciate the exposure here. Yep. And... Um, Possibly the next Steven Spielberg is sitting in his uh, dorm room in Emerson right now. <laughs> it's not unheard. And it's not. That's not unheard of. That's um, not unheard of. So, I'm on IMDb.com. Right. You know, Internet Movie Database. When you think of it, all um, these talented, creative people are converging right here in Boston, mm -hmm. Emerson, and some other places, BU and yeah. Harvard, mm -hmm. and all of this creative energy is here, and we have the people that they can tap into, too. Absolutely. Right. Yes. The, talent yeah. the talent is here. The talent is here. There's a lot of talent, right a lot of good people. And also the here. ambience and the atmosphere. This is, what, mm -hmm. this is the attraction, South Boston, Charleston. What I like to tell people who aren't familiar with Boston is, this is where it all began. Yeah. And we, on those words, we have to leave. <laughs> Aw. We have to leave. Al Chiloa, Ed O'Keefe, thank you so much for thank being you. our guest tonight on the program. Appreciate Jim, it. Jim, any parting words? Thanks, Jim. See you next month, John. Yeah, that's right, folks. Join us next month. We have an all-new program for you, and we have a couple of actors all lined up. We're still getting everything ready for the November and December show. This is a, an opportunity for Jim and myself to thank all of you who are watching us tonight on BNN TV to continue to watch us once a month, a new season. We're in a brand-new right. season now that I think of it. It'll be 2015 in a that's couple right. months. That's right, a brand-new season. And congratulations to BNN TV on its 30th anniversary right here in Boston, Massachusetts. So stay with us, folks. We'll see you in November with yet an all-new edition of our program. Good night. Good night.